looking onto the kiwi. Here's Bruce Bitty. Insects are finding a different way to categorize species. Yes, there's a pocket pocket that explains these. Oh, the story of the pocket pocket of the kiwi. Tame, when he forms in the upper one, he's a masculine presence, she's a feminine presence. He's on people. You could have just told me to open it. Open it. <laughs> um, we have uh, the masculine and the feminine presence. Okay, so they're going to have sex. Well, he was poking around in the nostrils and produced snot. Poked in the ear and produced wax. He poked under her arm and produced the kiwi. Well, he didn't get to the vagina until after the kiwi, which makes the kiwi to a comment for people, seniors, who are obliged to look after the seniors. And vice versa. The two of pain no relationship came to being junior. It's, you know, it's not us. So. And there's stuff on the key. Now, in theory, Māori will be able to access this and have some sort of risk assessment. I think there'd be issues over scientific literacy. You know, how much and how easy do we ourselves cross out of discipline to understand what other people do? Uh, making stuff available doesn't necessarily mean the final transfer into the brain takes place. I did some work on custom fisheries, interviewing and meeting with people and watching them collaborate with scientists. Niwa, Crown Research Institute, doing a lot of projects. Sea Safe at Otago, set up the Mahina Kai project, which I'll talk about shortly. Gail Tita did some early work on cultural health, in the, uh, cultural health index, so we have cultural health indices out there. We have templates for thinking along these lines. That's a picture of um, a whale surfacing in a flock of tiki. The white feather in the background on some of the slides is a down feather from the tiki. Mahinga Kai. Mahinga, uh, Mahinga Kai is food gathering, customary food gathering, kiaki, guardianship. So it was a project to look into customary fisheries in New Zealand, with legislation that allowed for this. The project was problematic, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, it had a million dollars over four years, which is not a lot of money. It had struggled to uh, establish trust with Kaisiaki. Scientists struggled to establish trust. And it's kind of just gone nowhere. So the internet can know that. Mm -hmm. um, but it brings people together, it, gets, it challenges people, gets people thinking. Right? So it's not a failure, it just hasn't worked according to the milestones that they promised the government. You go to the Papa Museum in Wellington and you see this. This is a modern buddy nui, carved out of plywood. Fluorescent tubing, glowing paint uh, by an artist Cliff Whiting. And things mm. change. Things change. And if the artist they push all that ink, words and numbers are always interested in this. New Zealand, 29th out of 30 of the OECD countries for childhood poverty. The US is higher than New Zealand for childhood poverty. And I think New Zealand is beautiful and Lord of the Rings and Fly of the Concord. This was a wake up call. And it kind of just slipped by. Economic growth, productivity. New Zealand economy is struggling. That matters. There was some Ralph Love. We turned up there in 1994. Our fate as Māori is tied up with the fate of Pākehā. We're not going to own all of New Zealand. The Māori economy is slotted into everything else. Unemployment figures. Wahine women carry a lot of the load of youth unemployment. The far as the recession goes on, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it fragments your society when you start thinking like this. There's some raw numbers. So you seem to save more money, which is another way of saying the way Māori land and assets are brokered uh, means you're obliged to not spend. You've got to say, you can't pump, you can't invest out there as much as you might like. Which in a recession and a financial crisis is a good thing. Yeah. When you look at long term, not 12 months, not 5 years, but 100, 200, 300 years, it may be that not divesting your assets, not gambling with them. You know, I've often said that Māori of the 18 and 1900s would have been perfectly happy on Wall Street in the SC it's all about asserting yourself and about getting out there, getting larger in the world. Um, there's some strong gender differences nowadays with that sort of behaviour. I don't think a lot of mighty women would be. Um, if 
different ways of living, different ways of being. This is what we now do. 40% of New Zealand seafood industry. We're going to get a lot of marine space for aquaculture. The forest estate is going to grow under Māori. And then, then we're historically we're an agricultural economy. It's up east coast. This is Kimura wine, not your wine. Kimura wine is got a phrase like firefly, so it's kind of good for you. It's always thinking of ways to pitch your product to the market. Historically, yeah, we'll have to work on the farm. Palming, the English Transliteration of Farm. And now we have these incorporations. It's how the government will negotiate with you, not as a tribe, but as an incorporated. Ewe. The Māori Farmer of the Year. I'm doing some research on this now, Māori Agri Business. Māori Farmer of the Year, the father's father won it once and came second and third back in the 40s. His name's Colin Brown. That's only now, so I'm a $50 note. And then the joke for Māori is we've got a $50 note. We've actually got a $100 note with Wallace and Stippy Atten. I could only ask it. We instituted this in 1932. All our farmers were winning. The competition went into abeyance in 1990, the early 1990s, and started up again in 2003, and now it's the big farms, these big corporations are winning. It's the track here. It's kind of typical. This is in a Saudi Nui or a community or somewhere else, somewhere up in the North Island, somewhere on the East Coast, I think. Yeah, we like nothing. We were having a speech, speech of fine. Uh, the three finalists of this year's contest 2009, two of them were headed by Wilson. <coughs> Farm manager, Ed Shepard, Parkland. Māori don't work on the land anymore, not only in corporations. Most of the employees, it's highly skilled work, highly technical work, a Pākehā. Our education initiatives have not managed to draw Māori back into the land in the numbers that these corporations operate on. The biggest issue now for me down in Canterbury is going to be water. Most of the allocated water for irrigation in New Zealand is in my province of Canterbury, in the South Island. The heat is you know, Aragorn and the, the house and the doors. <laughs> this is the scenery. Then your water up there, it goes through hydro skin. From the groundwater, it goes down to irrigation. And we're getting through the treaty, crown and settling. We have this relationship, this corporate relationship. These are some of the key pieces of policy and legislation. You've got to have numbers, you've got to work with words and numbers, quality and quantity. Clean the water, but the demands on it are huge. Okay, we're actually farming less areas, but we're being really intensive about it. It's an industry, it's an industrial capitalist industry. They have to be great. Okay. I thought it was like this on the way from on the train. Um, today, sort of rolling brown hill. Pine, Monterey pine, Pine Australia, uh, introduced and they're actually they're, they're a little wild. Um, that's a typical Canterbury scene. It's less and less water. Um, and now it's after 12, so um, it's not rude if you go to your new take class. A break. And here's a class that's fine. We'll have um, a few refreshments and safety practice. Don't forget to sign in the sign-in sheet so everyone signs in. People love sheets. We do the same business as Farkia. Sheets, cattle, kiwi fruits. 